Today I have a webinar on the seismic design of special concentrically braced frames. Um, and so we'll, we'll get right into it here. Uh, so uh, an outline of the topics that we're going to cover today. Um, I'm going to have uh, describe the types of concentrically braced frames and how they're used in seismic design provide a overview of the behavior of concentrically braced frames and, and specifically focus on a, key, uh, a few key principles um, that we use to uh, ensure ductility in concentrically braced frames. Then I'll go through the uh, requirements for uh, design of special concentrically braced frames in the AISC seismic provisions. And then I have uh, some uh, new information at the end um, that highlights uh, some recent research that is likely to make its way into the uh, next revision of the seismic provisions. Uh, and so we'll, we'll highlight that stuff uh, at the end. Okay, uh, to get started, um, I think it's important to have an overview of the building code philosophy. Um, for seismic design um, before we begin actually discussing uh, the specifics of uh, the seismic behavior of braced frames. Um, so just to review, uh, the philosophy for the building code in the United States um, for uh, seismic design is really to prevent collapse in the extreme earthquake likely to occur at a building site. Specifically, uh, there's nothing that we do in seismic design, uh, nothing you're required to do by the building code uh, that is specifically aimed at limiting damage, maintaining function, or providing for easy repair. Instead, it's really implied that design for collapse prevention in these uh, very large earthquakes, what we uh, design for is called the maximum considered earthquake, um, really uh, what we assume is that providing that level of collapse prevention provides better performance in smaller than MCE ground shaking. So that's important as we begin our discussion of, uh, of special concentrically braced frame design. Again, understanding our objectives really are uh, to prevent collapse of frames in large earthquakes. And so what we do when we, uh, when we design steel structures for seismic loads is we want to ensure ductility or inelastic deformation capacity of our steel structures. And so that's illustrated with this simple example here um, that uh, shows the inelastic deformation of a, uh, of a frame under, a, under lateral load. Um, so we push the frame with lateral force H, it's displacing delta. And uh, the, the kind of deformation um, before collapse, I have this illustrated on the next slide. So the deformation uh, before we, we start to lose stability in the frame, that would maybe be called the deformation at failure, divided by the yield deformation, delta Y, uh, that's known as the ductility factor. And that really describes the ability of our structural systems to undergo inelastic deformation prior to, to failure. And this is the really the key for seismic design, and uh, and we're going to draw a lot upon that uh, when we talk about braced frames. Inherent in our building code are observations from many years ago, um, in which uh, people observed that for a given earthquake, if we had two structures that had the similar stiffness but different strengths. Um, and uh, so one structure maybe remains completely elastic. Uh, that's uh, given by the solid line here. And, uh, and say another structure has about one quarter of that strength, but instead it has a ductile behavior. And so after it yields, it's able to accommodate uh, large and elastic deformations. If we subject both those structures to the same earthquake, on average, they're going to have the same maximum displacement. This allows us to trade elastic strength for ductility. And so what we're able to do uh, in, in seismic design is instead of designing for very large earthquake forces such that our structures remain elastic, instead we design for much smaller earthquake forces 
um, in this illustration down to as low as one quarter. And instead we are able to, or we must provide the necessary ductility capacity. And so we have to uh, uh, have a ductility capacity in this case that would be um, about four times the yield displacement of uh, the structure for this lowest strength uh, system. So this notion of trading strength for ductility is really the backbone of uh, seismic design in the United States. It's how we ensure collapse prevention and how we are able to do economic design for smaller forces than what would be required if our systems were to remain completely elastic. 